Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Are you interested in finding out what the best RAW editor to use for RAW HDR merging? Confused with a multitude of choices? Stick around as we're going to be updating last year's video on this topic. But this time, we're going to be using different and I believe a better set of input images which will do a better job of revealing the strengths and weaknesses of each editor. We've also added a new entrant, DxO HDR effects, and removed on one photo raw, which had the poorest performance in last year's list. Do remember to stay till the end for our slideshow comparison so you can be the final judge on which HDR editor is the best. For this year, we're going to be looking at two main criteria. First will be the image quality produced. The HDR output should represent authentically what the scene looked like without looking over-processed. Second is editing capability. The editor's tone adjustments should be able to recover detail in highlights and shadows in the same way as a raw file. So with that criteria out of the way, let's get right into the list. At number five is Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo was one of the first HDR merging editors I used, and I've always appreciated its snappy performance, solid image quality, and simple operation. Some good things of Affinity Photo are, it accepts raw files as input, it allows you to change the image's look with presets, and has comprehensive editing options. My favorite tool in its editing panel is its local contrast tool, which enhances mid-tone contrast and makes the image pop. So why is Affinity at number five? The main weakness of Affinity Photo has to do with its color processing. As you can see from this example, the red color, which was nice and saturated, looks a little bit washed out and desaturated in the final HDR. This behavior was consistently evident in all of Affinity's results. It also was the only editor that did not properly render the beautiful yellow color in the lamp. Another weakness is its editing performance. Its adjustments do not work with RAW. As you can see here, it had problems bringing back the color and detail in the lamps. As a workaround, you can pre-edit each RAW image in the developed persona and export each as a JPEG before performing the tone mapping. But that would entail a lot more work and ideally, Affinity should just do a better job in its tone mapping or support raw editing. At number four is Nick HDR FX6 by DxO. HDR FX is a new addition for this year's list and replaces On One Photo Raw. Nick HDR FX is the only software on this list that is not a full raw editor and instead is a plugin or standalone application which is part of the Nick Collection suite. DxO says the latest Nick Collection has been lovingly refreshed and rebuilt. Despite this, HDR effects is still incompatible with raw input. So I had to manually convert all the test raw files into JPEG to properly test the software. It also had trouble detecting the exposure spacing, and I had to repeatedly set the value or the final results would look terrible. Not the smoothest workflow. This should have been all automatically taken care of. Despite these disadvantages, why is it ranked higher than Affinity? Well, in my test, the images from HDR effects looked better. As you can see, it was able to successfully bring back the yellow color in the lights something that Affinity did not do. It also maintained the bright and vivid red color of the original input, which is evidence of better tone mapping processing. It also had more pleasing tone adjustments across the board. That goes for its shadows and highlights. Its tools for enhancing detail, called structure and detail, also work well to make the image come alive. In terms of weaknesses, just like Affinity, it does not support raw editing, which limits its capabilities in bringing back details 
particularly in high contrast scenes. Also, as mentioned, it did not support raw input. Finally, it is not a full-fledged raw editor, so you can't do things like crop, straighten, and others, and you need to use another application for those. So that is number four. Let's move on to number three. At number three is Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo was number two in last year's list and goes down a notch because of our emphasis on raw HDR merging. As you can see here, just like HDRFX, it successfully brought back the yellow color in the lamps and maintained the nice bright red color in the original input image. Better than HDR effects though, Luminar Neo supports raw image input even though the output file is not a DNG and is not raw editable. Another plus of Luminar over HDR effects is the image quality produced was more natural looking and had less tendency to look over processed as HDR effects sometimes did. Luminar also had the simpler and better editing controls and that goes for its shadows and highlight slider. I particularly like its AI accent tool which does a great job of enhancing the HDR with just one slider. So that is number three. Let's move on to number two. At number two is Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom was number one in last year's list and falls down a notch because of some issues which I'll be discussing in a moment. Lightroom stands out because of its natural looking image quality, vivid color, and raw editability of its HDR. The main strength of Lightroom over Luminar is its ability to save the output as a DNG and edit the final output as raw. This allows for better adjustments, both global and local, which not only make the edits look better, it allows you to recover more detail in bright highlights and dark shadows. In terms of weaknesses, the main issue I saw with Lightroom has to be the colors, which by default has a tendency to look overly saturated. It also tone mapped this particular image poorly, producing an image with an inordinate amount of noise. A result I also got in last year's test. So that is number two. And that brings us to number one, Capture One Pro. Capture One Pro was number three in last year's list, but has been moved to number one due to its superior image quality and powerful editing tools, specifically when dealing with raw input. Capture One does not support JPEG input. So why is Capture One better than Lightroom in my view? First, while Lightroom has a tendency to oversaturate colors, as you can see here, Capture One does not. Its colors are more pleasing and represents what I saw in the actual scene. Second, Capture One also had the better raw tone adjustments. Its shadows and highlight slider does a better job of limiting its effect to the correct tones. Lightroom had a tendency to affect a broader area. Just like Lightroom, Capture One exports the final image as a DNG, making the final image editable as raw. Perfect for its tone adjustments and all new AI masking, which all work great with a raw file. So in my view, Capture One is number one when it comes to raw HDR merging and will give you the best images. It certainly did for me. But don't take my word for it. Let's now watch a slideshow comparison so you can be the final judge on which editor is the best. Do note that I've mostly used default settings in all these software for a better apples to apples comparison.
So I hope you enjoyed that slideshow comparison. As you can see, all these raw editors can produce stunning HDR images. Let me know which one you think was the best. Write it down in the comments. And let me know which editor you personally use for your own HDR merging. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.